Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and fall is coming, and I'm back in my regular studio to talk with you about my favorite ways to track initiative. Let's roll it. So initiative is one of those things that anyone who has ever played a tabletop role-playing game understands. You roll some dice and you try to figure out the order in which combat works. There have been a lot of tweaks over the years. People enjoy different ways to deal with initiative. But all in all, it tends to be one of the more tedious mechanics of the game. A lot of folks have said over and over again in YouTube videos and in person that it kind of breaks the whole flow as you're trying to figure out where you're going. And until I ran an in-person game when I started my Castles and Crusades campaign, I didn't quite understand because in a virtual tabletop, you just press a button and it rolls the dice and everybody is auto-arranged and there's your order. But in person, you all have to roll dice and then you have to figure out who's got what number, and then you have to list them from the first all the way down to the last. And if you have multiple creatures and you want to roll individual initiative for all of them, which I have done, much to my mistake, um, then that's going to take time. And after a while, everybody's just bored because they want to get on with that. What I'm listing here in this video are some ways that I've actually done initiative or I'm about to do initiative or ways that I have read and I am really eager to try because I like what they flow into the game. Let's take a look. So the first of these I'm calling Around the Horn Initiative, and this is used in games like Shadow Dark. I like the idea. In fact, in Shadow Dark, you have what's called Always On Initiative, and that's a way to keep people from hogging the limelight because you just change initiative to someone else and say they have the spotlight right now. The way it works is you roll a die, whatever is keyed for your initiative in that system. Whoever gets the highest number goes first, and then you just move clockwise around the horn, and the GM fits in there somewhere. I like this because it is clean, it is fast, and it is simple. You're not rearranging people according to what number they got. You're just figuring out who rolled the highest and you're moving on from there. This is really fast and I did use it for my one Shadow Dark live stream. It worked really well. Uh, and I do enjoy that when different situations happen, you re-roll your initiative because you're changing the dynamic of the table at that point, but it's always just moving clockwise. And if I used it, I think even in combat, I would probably call for rerolls if the situation changes a lot, like new adversaries show up or there's a new hazard that changes the combat space in some way that's going to adjust the way people are reacting. I'd call for a new initiative roll at that point. But even then, who's got the highest? Okay, let's move. That's really nice. So Basic Fantasy RPG's initiative system is the one that I've used the most with my online game that's been running for over two years now. It's very simple. Everybody rolls a d6 and higher numbers go first. You also add your dex modifier to your roll. The interesting thing about Basic Fantasy RPG, however, is that when you have initiative rolls that end up with the same number, those people or those participants in combat they act simultaneously. And this is really cool because if you get someone who rolls the same number as a really big bad and they manage to take out the big bad, well, the big bad still gets to go that turn. This is their initiative. And so they get to look down as maybe they're bleeding out and are about to keel over, but they still get one blow to come down on your head. The other thing I like about Basic Fantasy RPG's initiative is that you re-roll every combat round. This gives a little bit more of a dynamic flavor to the combat. It reduces the temptation to metagame and say, well, I can stay here in front of this giant dragon because the person with the healing spell goes before the dragon goes, so I'm pretty much okay. Not going to happen in Basic Fantasy RPG because that initiative order can change. So I do like this because it is random. It changes every turn and it's going to give a different flow to combat. And I also like that it's a small pool of numbers. So the chances of having people going on the same initiative are pretty good. It's just one really to six. Or if you add dex modifiers, you can go a little above or a little below. So that's kind of fun. And if I was running this, I can tell you that I probably just have 
a pool going across my GM screen with every possible initiative number on it, and then clothespins, and I would just put characters in whatever pool they belong, and I would do creatures by groups because it would just move faster that way. Chris Gonerman, when he's running a game, he actually has everybody take the six-sided die that they rolled for initiative and stick it by their mini, and that way you can see on the table who's going when. That's actually a really cool innovation that I'd never seen anybody else using before. That's another way to do it. I don't use physical minis because I would throw them through the wall, but if you are using physical minis, that's a nice way to track initiative by just placing the die on the table and you just forget about all those initiative trackers and clothespins and all that sort of thing. Pretty cool. So in Numenera or the Cypher system, initiative is done by making a speed check and it's run just like any other role in the game. The creatures that you are in combat with or the NPCs that you are in combat with, they are going to have a level that goes from zero all the way up to 10. And in order to go before them in combat, you have to roll a d20 and get above their level or their target number. You find that out by taking their level and timesing it by three. So if you have a fourth level creature, well, then you times that by three and you have to beat a 12. It's pretty straightforward. But the nice thing about Numenera is that it is indeed just a regular roll. So if you want to add things like effort, that means spending a couple of points from your speed pool to lower your target number a little bit, then you can do that. If you have assets that would speed up your reaction, well, you can apply that to the roll as well and lower the target number just a little more. So I like the fact that in Numenera, there is no change to the way the rules work. It's the same check just a speed check, beat your target number, and you get to go before your adversaries. This is kind of cool. I like that it's simple. It's just before and after. That is really fun. And the fact that it just uses the normal rules of the game, nothing gets added, nothing gets taken away. That's really cool. And if I did this in person, which I am indeed about to do, I might just stick all my GM screen a before and after pool, and then I would just move close pins of the PCs determining where they would go. And the nice thing is if you have creatures who have different levels, so you have some that are level four, some that are level three, then you just have this here, this here, and your PCs go in these different spots. Also really easy to use with a trackable app. You just drag the parties into whatever pool you want. And when a party's pool of action hits, well, they get to go as they see fit. They're not jiggling over who's got higher dexterity or who rolled the bigger number. Now you're going before the creatures, you guys figure out what you want to do. Really cool and it works with the in-game fiction. One that I have not used yet, but I would really like to hack into a game at some point because I think it works really well, is kind of a very similar idea to Numenera. Initiative is essentially a dexterity check, which is a normal role of the game for pickpocket presses, low fantasy gaming. Essentially, it's a roll under mechanic. You take your dexterity score, you roll a d20. If you meet that or get under, you get to go before the creatures that are in the fight. And if you roll under half of your dexterity score, round it up, then if you meet any creatures who have a boss tag, like they're really big, big, big creatures, then you get to go before them as well. So it is a group initiative system because you either are going before or after bosses or before or after other adversaries. And that's pretty much it. You figure it out from there. So very similar to Numenera. Low Life 2090, which is the next game that uses Pickpocket Press's LFG system, they actually add a new stat to your character sheet, which is literally called initiative. And that is the average of your dexterity and your intelligence score, which I like. It's a little bit more realistic. You have to have intelligence to be able to look around and see what's happening and be able to process it and dexterity to react fast enough to make use of it. That's kind of cool. So you, now you're not making a dexterity check, you're making an initiative check. And I do believe that Low Fantasy Gaming is coming out with a new edition fairly soon and that that initiative attribute is going to be part of the new game because it's really well done. What I like about this way of dealing with initiative is very similar to Numenera's. It's not a tracking of numbers. Who's got which number when? How are you going? It's simply asking the question, did you succeed or did you not? 
Are you going in this pool or are you going in this pool? Oh, you succeeded very well. Then here, we'll put you over here in this very teeny pool. Very fast and very fluid. Also, because it is so quick, you can redo it every turn and that's gonna get a little more of a dynamic flow into the combat without being too tedious and having to check on every number going around the table. It's just blink, 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 move your clothespins around, drag them to wherever they need to be in your app, and you're pretty much done and ready to go. And were I to ever get a chance to play low fantasy gaming, I would probably stick two clothespins up on the GM screen. One would say bosses or heavies. Heavies is a tag that gets added into Low Life 2090, by the way. So there's some heavier bosses or adversaries. I would put bosses or heavies on one clothespin. I would put adversaries on the other closed pin. And then when a person says that they succeed, that determines where I'm going to put them in relation to those closed pins. And from there, everybody just figures it out. Pretty fast and pretty quick. If I'm using an app, I got one that I can just drag people around. I don't need to worry about the numbers that they land on or anything like that. I just have to see visually they go before these guys. And that's pretty cool. One of the cool things about TTRPGs, especially when you go back and look at the history of them, is all the different ways that folks do handle initiative. It doesn't have to be a D20 and add your dexterity and then see who goes where depending on your number. And for much of the hobby's history, that's not how it worked. Go all the way back to like Moldvay Cook, Basic and Expert, and you can see that it was group initiative. You just rolled and the higher number, that group got to go first as it progressed through the steps of combat. Really cool stuff, and there's a lot there to chew on and for people to learn from as they want to apply it and adapt it for their own games. What is the best initiative system? It's the one that works best for you and that is the most fun for the players at the table. Is there a particular way of handling initiative that you like at your table? Why don't you share them in the comments below? So what do I have coming up for the channel? Well, I have finished writing my bullet point review for my Savage Worlds Fantasy Companion book. That should be coming out rather soon, trying to find time where I can actually video it. It's been a busy couple of weeks, but it is written and ready to go. I have read my Traveler rulebook that I got. It's the 2008 printing, which I think is the first Mongoose Traveler. Pretty interesting system. I have some thoughts on that. And I have now started Dragon Bane, which I am really looking forward to. I still have Fantasy Age Second Edition on my shelf, along with the Marvel Multiverse game that came out just in August. Looking forward to digging into all of these with you. Until we see each other again, folks. Happy playing, everyone.